On the 7th of March, 2020, an Air Canada Embraer ERJ-190 set flight to Denver from Toronto, speeding down the Toronto Pearson International Airport runway. Just behind it, another Air Canada aircraft, this time a Boeing 777 heading to Halifax, was somehow also given takeoff clearance for the same runway. The massive 777 was now on a collision course with the decelerating Embraer 190 and only seconds away from disaster. This is the story of how two Air Canada planes and air traffic control ran it dangerously close. The 777 was trailing the Embraer 190 at high speed with hopes to take off after it was fully airborne. However, rather than go airborne, the ERJ-190 crew, unaware of what was behind them, notified for a rejected takeoff due to a bird strike. But no one could hear their call. The Air Traffic Control Centre for Toronto Pearson is centrally positioned within its five runway layout for optimal visibility. However, due to the varying positions of the runways, traffic controllers don't always have the best view of some positions and have to resort to using binoculars. On the day of the incident, the weather was good, with light winds and very good visibility. The traffic controller in charge of takeoffs and landings had started his shift at 6.15 a.m. local time and rotated through multiple different controller positions until 9.30 a.m. when he took on the role of the tower controller. The reason he rotated through multiple roles was that only four out of nine air traffic control center workstations were occupied. And with two of the controllers focused on handling ground movement on the taxiways and another dealing with giving out air traffic control radio clearance, he was left having to perform multiple roles covering the position of the north and south controllers. This situation wasn't ideal for concentration. However, the presence of guidance and control systems such as RIMCAS or runway incursion monitoring and conflict alert subsystem in the control tower combined with the rather low traffic of departures and landings meant that he should have been able to make it work. But on this very day, those warning systems would fail him because the weather was clear, the traffic controller used what is known as pilot-applied visual separation rules between departing aircraft. This meant that it was up to the pilots in the aircraft behind to maintain visual separation between their aircraft and the aircraft ahead, rather than wait for the aircraft ahead to be fully airborne. By doing this, the controller felt he could save himself some time because the normal separation rules wouldn't allow him to grant takeoff clearance until specific separation metrics had been hit. If aircrafts are ever positioned too close due to the application of pilot applied visual separation, there's a risk of the plane in front subjecting the one behind to immense wake turbulence. But luckily for the controller, the plane ahead that day was the smaller Embraer 190 and not the massive 777 jet. This, however, would not be the only worry for the controller. That morning, 83 passengers and four crew members boarded Air Canada Flight 1037 from the Toronto Pearson International Airport to Denver, Colorado, ready for takeoff. At a different gate, 345 passengers and 14 crew members were boarding a Boeing 777 for Flight 606 to Halifax. The Toronto to Halifax route was usually dominated by smaller aircraft, but news of the impact of the coronavirus had probably sent travellers into a state of panic, and with many of Air Canada's travellers seemingly in a hurry to Halifax, they had no option but to deploy the massive Boeing 777 jet. Both flights had expected to use the same runway, runway 06L, for takeoff with the 777 instructed to line up behind the Embraer 190. All they needed was clearance for takeoff from air traffic control to know when it was safe to begin takeoff proceedings. The Embraer 190 jet passed all the pre-flight checks, so it was given clearance to take off, and at around 9.50 a.m., it began to make its way down runway 06L. Since the traffic controller had decided to use pilot-applied visual separation, the pilots of the 777 were free to request for takeoff clearance once the Embraer 190 was deemed to be far enough away that it didn't obstruct the 777's takeoff. So, when the Embraer 190 looked far enough, the Boeing 777 crew requested takeoff clearance and began to make their way to hold on runway 06L. Unknown to the flight crews of both aircrafts, 
the first sign of danger was just about to appear. As the Embraer 190 was approaching rotational speed, a thud was felt in the cockpit. The flight crew's observation suggested that it was a bird strike, but with no way to tell the extent of damage, the captain decided it was best to halt takeoff since they hadn't reached rotational speed. So, the flight crew initiated a rejected takeoff and made a radio call to air traffic control to inform them about the situation while they decelerated the aircraft. Meanwhile, the flight crew of the 777 were also on a call to air traffic control as they tried to acknowledge their own takeoff clearance. As both calls were being made to the same frequency and the Boeing had significantly stronger transmission power, the call from the Embraer 190 was completely missed and the 777 had its takeoff clearance confirmed. Both the ATC and the 777 flight crew were unaware of the bird strike, which had just caused the Embraer 190 to begin slowing down, and the 777 was now making its way down the same runway. The traffic controller, thinking he had sorted the movement on runway 06L, turned his attention to runway 05 at the north end of the airport, where two other aircrafts were set for approach. In his mind, the distance between the Embraer 190 and the 777 seemed okay before he looked away. This meant, unfortunately, that he wasn't paying attention to the deceleration of the Embraer 190. Moments later, with all the warnings still going unnoticed, the controller cleared yet another aircraft, a de Havilland-8, to make its way to the same runway, 06L, and prepare for takeoff. This meant that there were now three aircraft on the same runway, yet somehow the guidance systems failed to send out any warnings. Usually, the RIMCAS system would signify to the controllers when two mobile planes on the ground are within a dangerous distance of each other. But the Embraer 190's transponder had somehow denoted that the aircraft was airborne after it accelerated past 50 knots, despite the aircraft being parked on the ground. This meant that the RIMCAS couldn't send out any warning as it thought the aircraft was no longer on the ground, despite indicating its deceleration. Behind the Embraer 190, the flight crew of the 777 began to notice that the Embraer 190 was getting closer rather than farther away from them, and they knew something had gone wrong. The problem, however, was that the aircraft was barreling down the runway at over 230 kilometers per hour, and the Embraer 190 was just less than three kilometers away. At that rate, it would take less than a minute for the 777 to collide with the Embraer 190. Presumably, no one on the 190 would survive such a collision. The flight crew of the 777 were faced with two options, to continue accelerating and somehow take off just above the Embraer 190, or to reject takeoff entirely. Since the plane had not reached rotational speed, the captain decided it was best to reject takeoff and reached out to air traffic control to inform them of the new plans. Unlike the Embraer 190, the radio call from the 777 to signify a rejected takeoff was received by the controller. However, it was only then that the controller checked for the Embraer 190 and found that it hadn't been in its expected position, but was rather airborne and at the end of the runway. But it was now too late, and all the controller could do was wait and watch to see if the flight crew of the 777 could stop the plane before it collided with the Embraer 190. Just 1,500 meters away from the collision, the flight crew in the Boeing 777 were able to bring the massive plane to a halt. No one had been hurt, and both planes suffered no damage apart from a dent caused by the bird strike. Had the 777 flight crew not rejected takeoff when they did, the situation could have easily ended up being catastrophic. A TSB report into the incident offered insight into what could have led to this incident. The report noted that the remains of a hawk were found during inspection of the Embraer 190 to confirm that it was indeed a bird strike which led to the rejected takeoff. The report also noted that the plane's transponder had been compliant with current standards even though it had made such a transmission error after the plane accelerated past 50 knots. Also, the air traffic controller's decision to use pilot-applied visual separation meant that he was working with assumptions based on the speed and position of the aircraft when it was last monitored. As a result of this, the Boeing 777 was given clearance to take off, despite the aircraft ahead of it still being on the runway. 
The overlap in communication between the radio messages from the Embraer 190 and the Boeing 777 to air traffic control also exacerbated the situation as the rejected takeoff message went undetected by both air control and the 777 behind. Analysis of the incident showed that transmissions of both messages had occurred within one hundredth of a second of each other and lasted almost as long too. The Embraer 190's transponder wrong transmission, which lasted for over a minute, also played a role in putting the aircraft in danger. Due to this, the RIMCAS also failed to detect the danger on time as it was reading that both the Embraer and the Boeing aircrafts had been airborne despite both still being on the ground. In the wake of the incident, NAV Canada published a bulletin to remind all Toronto Tower personnel that alerts from the guidance systems may not be generated when certain aircrafts are departing and reminded controllers to monitor such situations closely. In the bulletin, it was highlighted that certain aircraft types, including the Embraer, might have an earlier onset of in-flight indication, which could cause some warnings not to come when expected. Ultimately, no individual can be blamed for the events that led to the planes being in danger of a collision, including the traffic controller who had given clearance for the 777 to take off. This is because, if the control tower wasn't short-staffed at the point where the aircrafts were set to take off, then he probably would have been able to focus on either the expected takeoffs or incoming landings. The situation was caused by a combination of minor oversights, which were aggravated due to an unexpected bird strike. It then became worse when communications got mixed up and the transponder of the Embraer 190 began to transmit that the aircraft had become airborne. But thankfully, the flight crew of the 777 noticed the danger on time and managed to stop the aircraft before anything disastrous happened. If anyone is to be blamed for the incident, it should be the faulty systems that gave out false indications. Or the bird. But what do you think? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care.